this is Neha Patnavar, Assistant Professor, Department of Biotechnology Engineering, KIT's College of Engineering, Autonomous Kolhapur. I am here with a course named Food and Nutritional Technology and today we are going to look at Unit 1 which is Food Chemistry. So through this particular unit, the, the learners will be able to grasp the aspects in the food chemistry. So let us start with lesson 1 today and the outline for the session are importance of food chemistry, food resources and its composition, different types of water in food, role of it, concept of water activity, effect of water activity on food processing. So these are the outline for this session. Let us begin with the introduction of food chemistry. So food chemistry is uh, related to chemistry and biological sciences like biochemistry, botany, zoology and molecular biology. So certainly a person working with food chemistry is known as a food chemist who is concerned with conditions that are suitable for sustaining the life process, the residual life process that is post-harvest physiology of a food substance. For example, it could be fresh fruits and vegetables during their marketing. So basically to sustain the life, the shelf life of the food products, a food chemist will be working for. So let us uh, quickly look at uh, the history of the food chemistry. A scientist known as Carl Wilhelm Scherl within the year, you know, 1742 till 1786. He did one of the greatest work, like he isolated and studied various properties of lactose from milk, malic acid from apples and citric acid from lemon juice. Right? He was the greatest chemist, one of the greatest chemists of all time and his pioneering work was in food chemistry. So by the first uh, half of the 20th century, most of the essential dietary substances uh, like proteins, lipids, vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, mostly all the macro and micronutrients were discovered and characterized. So to understand the importance of food uh, chemistry, so enhancing the nutritional value is one. So food chemistry allows us to understand the different uh, components present in the food right understanding the nutritional value of the food so that is how this food chemistry will enhance the nutritional value understanding the nutritional value of the food right uh, along with that it helps in improving the food safety so food borne illnesses are significant concern globally so these food chemists they play a vital role, in impo an important role in understanding the food safety with the help of food chemistry. Also food chemistry will assist, sorry, also food chemistry will assist in advancing the food quality and the flavor. It will uh, help, this particular food chemistry will help in innovating sustainable food protection supporting the food industry and economy, informing the public health policies too. So these are some of the uh, importance of the food chemistry and uh, why one should learn you know, food chemistry. Let us now understand about the food resources and its general composition. Food resources, it encompasses all the elements required for the production processing, distribution and of course the consumption of food. So if you look at the diagram here, food resources, it comes from you know land, water, climate, you know it has an impact definitely. It, the food uh, resource is our plants, animals and microorganisms along with that laborious work is required, knowledge in the domain is required, expertise is required, machineries are required, equipments are required, biotechnology like uh, you know uh, inventive 
techniques, technologies and under biotechnology are required. Capital is important, subsidies are important and support programs from government are essential. Environmental sustainability is also one more important factor which definitely affects the food resources. So these are some of the food resources that are put on one particular slide. Let us now understand the general composition of the food. So food involves the macronutrients, micronutrients, water, bioactive compounds, additives and contaminants. So macronutrients, the example for macronutrients are carbohydrates, proteins and fats. So certain examples of micronutrients are vitamins and minerals. Also an integral part of the food is water, certain bioactive compounds like they could be antioxidants, they could be dietary fibers, phytochemicals. Along with that additives and contaminants too. So by understanding the composition of the food, now let us understand the role of the water in foods. Water acts as solvent we all know. It dissolves salts, sugars, solutes, various solutes in it. It will facilitate the chemical reaction and enhances the dispersion of flavors and nutrients. So it helps or let's say it affects the texture of the food by contributing to either hardness or softness of the food. So it has an impact on the texture and the structure of the food. It will act, water will act as medium for heat transfer. So it is essential in cooking processes like boiling, steaming, braising, enabling, it enables the efficient heat transfer to the food. Water will participate certainly in various chemical reactions. One such reaction I would like to name here is hydrolysis, which will break down complex molecules into simpler ones during digestion and cooking processes. Also, it, is, it has role in the preservation of foods. It will impact the growth of microorganisms. So lower the water activity in foods is to be achieved to make sure that we inhibit the growth of the microorganisms. So it helps preserve food by inhibiting the microbial growth. Few other roles of water involves sensory attributes and nutrient carrier. So if we talk about sensory attributes, water will contribute to sensory qualities of the food including mouthfeel, aroma release and juiciness. It will also act as nutrient carrier. So water will help transport the nutrients from within the food matrix into the human body during digestion process. So these are some of the role of water in foods. Let us understand what are the different types of water in foods. So there are three different types of water in food. One is free water, second is bound water and the third one is entrapped water. Let us understand what these three different types of water are. So water which is not bound to food molecules and it can move easily within the food and is free to move of course and it is present in large amount. It is called as free water. So let us understand what is bound water. So this particular bound water, it is incorporated into macromolecules such as proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, right? It is bound and therefore it is bound because it is attached and it will remain unfrozen below, even below the freezing point, usually minus 20 degrees Celsius and it is not available to act as a solvent because it is in bound form with macronutrients. Another type of water is entrapped water. So this entrapped water is immobilized in capillaries or cells. But if at all that particular food, mat food material or food substance during cutting or damage or if you cut that particular food substance. Entrapped water is immobilized in capillaries or cells. But if released during cutting or damage, this water will flow freely. So this entrapped water has properties of free water 
and no properties of bound water. So these are different types of water. Now let us understand what is water activity. So it is measure of availability of water in the food for what? For microbial growth and chemical reactions. So it ranges from completely zero till one. It is based on whether the food substance is completely dry or completely wet. So if it is completely dry, the number would be zero. If it is completely wet, then it would be one. So water activity is denoted with a signature with a symbol, which is AW. It is a measurement of water content. It can also be def defined by the vapor pressure of the water in the substance to the vapor pressure of the pure water at the same temperature. So foods with lower water activity have more shelf life and food with higher water activity they do not have longer shelf life. And because they are more, more prone to spoilage microorganisms. This water activity can obviously be controlled by drying, adding solutes like sugar or salt or by freezing. So it is one of the important consideration for food product design and food safety. So food designers, they use water activity to formulate the products that are shelf stable. So if a product is kept below a certain water activity, then of course you will make sure that mold growth is inhibited. This will definitely result in a longer shelf life. So it is also this particular water activity is used in many cases as a critical control point for HACCP programs. So these measurements of water activity can be taken in less than 5 minutes and are made regularly in most of the major food production facilities. So this is all about the water activity. So effect of water activity on food processing. Now let us understand this. So if you want to understand the effect of water activity on food processing, the techniques like drying, freezing, salting, sugaring and gelation are most important to understand the effect of water activity because by drying we make sure that the amount of water in the food substance is reduced and therefore we make sure that we are enhancing the shelf life of that particular food substance. Same with the freezing. You are going to freeze the food substance, storing it for a longer time, enhancing the shelf life of the same. Salting and sugaries, sugaring, sorry. Salting and sugaring, uh, for example, pickles and candies, right? Salting, uh, let us give an example of pickles and sugaring, let us give an example of candies. Along for gelation, let us give an example for of jellies or jams, right? So, uh, this is the, these are the techniques which will have an effect of water activity in the food processing. So with this, uh, there is a reflection spot wherein you may have to do your homework, a quite little homework. You may have to list the food resources and components of the food and you have to list, list the role and types of water in food. With this, we end our session here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for joining the lecture. Thank you so much.